David Brewster here with another three for all, and this is three Harry K. Cody licks from 1992. And I, before we get started here, I have to say I've received dozens and dozens of requests for Harry Cody, and I was shocked and surprised at first. And then over the last four or five months, I've received like just an avalanche of requests. And I thought I was the only one that remembered Shotgun Messiah and Harry Cody, but apparently there are a lot of viewers out there that have been patiently and uh, systematically bugging me uh, to make this lesson. And I do apologize for the delay. I finally found some footage and kind of put this together and was kind of feeling it. And it's like, okay, I think the time is, is right for Harry Cody. So uh, definitely keep up the requests because I am paying attention. And there was a little bit of a delay with this one, but here it is. If you're not familiar with Harry Cody, because he's, he's not really a household name. I mean, he does have a cult following, and there's a pack of, of musicians and players out there that remember him and Shotgun Messiah and some of the other things that he's done. Um, Shotgun Messiah was formed in Sweden in 1985, and uh, the vocalist from the band Easy Action joined forces with Harry Cody, and they uh, started a band called Kingpin, and they eventually changed into Shotgun Messiah, and they released you know, like three albums and an EP. And uh, Harry also recorded uh, with Stu Ham on two albums, uh, kind of early in Stu's career, his solo career. And um, I honestly wasn't familiar with the, the music. Uh, definitely familiar with Stu Ham, but I never really paid attention to the songs that Harry recorded with Stu Ham. And they're brilliant. So if you haven't heard, uh, you know, Harry playing with Stu Ham in the late 80s and early 90s, and there's some great music there. I think he, he shows up on like four or five tracks. And uh, there's also, you know, Eric Johnson and Steve Smith and a lot of other musicians on those albums. And Harry also appears on a Tom Waits album. Um, I forgot what it's called, though. Like Gone, like Real Gone or Gone Away or something like that. And I listened to it, and I think it is called Real, Real Gone. In 2004... And there was this weird song about a barn. I don't understand what was going on there. It was really, it was real gone, for sure. And I tried to get into it, and I like Tom Waits, for sure. I mean, he's a legend. But the music was a little erratic. It wasn't what I was expecting. I think Harry played banjo on a song and guitar on a couple songs. But that also, that also has Brain on drums and Les Claypool on bass. So it's a really just odd, you know, collaboration. But it's cool. All right, the licks from this lesson uh, come from a bootleg that was in Detroit, Michigan in 1992, and that would have been Shotgun Messiah's, you know, second coming tour. And the quality's kind of poor because it's 1992. It was probably a camcorder or a handheld, you know, VHS recorder in the crowd. And you can see it, you can hear it. It's just the quality's a little, you know, it's a little bad. Um, and there's really not very much footage out there. I did aggressively try to find, you know, additional footage. There's a few music videos, a few kind of appearances here and there. Um, you can actually find some early, you know, music videos from Kingpin, too. But this really is, like, one of the main, you know, like, bootlegs or uh, live performances I was able to find. And, uh, we're really just going to look at some licks from songs from Shotgun Messiah. And, you know, I'm using the video as kind of a visual, but I am referring to the actual album, you know, as far as the performance. And, uh, you know, just keep, keep that in mind. You know, check out the, the live footage, but then go back and actually listen to uh, the studio recording too. The first lick comes from the song You and Me, which is from Second Coming. And on the studio version, he's using a wah kind of as a filter, like a tone filter. And then on the live footage, he's just playing it, you know, straight. I don't think he's actually using the wah live. Uh, but it looks and sounds like this. And it's just like a melodic, you know, phrase. And the interesting thing is there's this chromatic movement that happens in that song, at least during that section, where it's moving from D to C sharp. To C to B. And Harry's kind of outlining that with this melodic, you know, phrase or motif. And it starts kind of outlining or dancing around D. And then 
one's going to hit the C sharp or D flat, and it kind of mimics that same movement, but the root note changed. And then you're going to go down to C right there. And then you're going to kind of do this uh, like E over G sharp, but he's also grabbing this A, which if you're thinking of E, that would be the fourth. So it's kind of like an E major arpeggio. But it's you know using the four, so like a sus four there for a second. But a really cool you know melodic phrase. Up next we have the opening to the solo from Heartbreak Boulevard, which is also from Second Coming, and it looks and sounds like this. <laughs> Now the opening here, it kind of reminds me of the solo from Whole Lot of Love, you know, Jimmy Page, um, Led Zeppelin. And it's not really the phrasing, it's the bending that kind of reminds me of Jimmy. Because um, Harry's starting with this, you know, step and a half bend, and he's grabbing this E, but he's bending it up to a G. So that's a big bend. Um, you know, think of Jimmy Page and Steve Lukather and some of those players. That's a hefty bend. And then he basically bends the 15th fret there on the B and cruises down, you know, E minor pentatonic. And then right there, he's going to bend the 15th on the high E, and then he climbs up the top two strings of E minor pentatonic on the E and the B. And then right there, grab the 19th fret on the high E and bend that up a step and a half. And that's the part that really reminds me of Whole Lot of Love, that little kind of Jimmy Page, you know, tag. <laughs> cool opening for a solo, it really grabs your attention. <laughs> right up next is a lick from the solo from Living Without You, which is kind of their ballad from uh, Second Coming. The song kind of reminds me of Every Rose Has Its Thorn. I think they were trying to kind of go for that kind of strummed acoustic ballad. And the solo, you know, it's in the similar key, it's in G. And the solo kind of loosely reminds me of Every Rose Has Its Thorn, but it's better. No offense to CC and the, and the guys from Poison, but this is a really cool lick. And it looks like this. <laughs> See, we're basically flirting with an arpeggio. He's kind of playing with this, like, you know, G major. He's also grabbing the sus4 right there, that C note. And he grabbed the C there. He also grabs a C right there, an octave lower. Something like that. And then he starts doing this little melodic uh, kind of flurry of notes. And then he answers that, you know, a whole step lower there between, uh, you know, he started with that A, G, A, and then he's doing G, F, G. And then he moves down to that E note. But I really like phrases like that. It kind of reminds me a little bit of David Gilmore, a little bit of Slash, you know, that kind of bluesy but melodic and uh, there's an arpeggio kind of mixed in the, you know, the phrasing. Here's a bonus lick for this lesson, and this didn't come from the live footage from Detroit in 92. Um, I was kind of hoping that Harry would play like a solo or he'd play the Explorer, and he didn't. Uh, he was kind of focused on the songs, and he played solos, you know, during the songs. 
but he didn't play, you know, a solo by himself or, or play an instrumental. And I was really hoping, you know, he would. And uh, this is from The Explorer, which is on uh, Shotgun Messiah's first album. And it's tuned in standard. So everything else that we did before this was in, you know, a half step down. And this is back in standard tuning. So I tuned back up. Just a heads up here before we start. And this is a cool uh, section of the song. It's kind of like halfway, like, you know, like around the middle of the tune. And he reinstates this kind of arpeggio melody. He plays a fast run, and then he does that arpeggio melody an octave higher, which is really cool. Uh, but it looks and sounds like this. And there you can see we're starting with this A power chord. And then we're kind of flirting around with this A major arpeggio. Kind of a, you know, A major, and there's like the sus4, you know, that D note chiming in. And then he does, technically it's like an E major 6 and D major 6. Or just E6 and D6, I guess, because he's adding that C sharp there for E and that B note for D. And then right here, he's basically flying up, you know, A Ionian or the major scale. And that's a pretty common sequence. And I think he's kind of doing that half and half, you know, half, half picked, half legato. And then he's going to basically mimic what he did earlier with this. But he does it an octave higher. So here's a little piece of uh, A major. And he adds that bend up there on the 21st fret, which is really cool. And then here's a little piece of E major. And a little piece of D major. And the A bend is a half step. And then the E bend is a whole step. And the D bend is a whole step. So that's tricky. You know, it's a good workout for your pinky, for sure, because your pinky is probably the one that's going to be grabbing those bends. Really cool lick, though, for sure. That's going to wrap this look at three here K. Cody licks from 1992, and definitely keep the requests coming. You know, I am paying attention to the comment section and also messages I see on Facebook, and, you know, I might have a little bit of a delay or I might get a little bit behind. I am a pretty busy, pretty busy guy. But I'm, I'm definitely trying to notice what, what you want to see, what you want to learn. And if you have requests or a certain player or a certain guitarist or a certain band or a certain topic, it could be, you know, scales or chords or arpeggios or, you know, just crazy licks or picking or whatever, um, you know, be sure to let me know. And you can leave a comment, you can contact me on Facebook. And I can't make any guarantees, but I will try to add and incorporate your requests in the material. So uh, anyway, hopefully uh, you got something from this. And leave some feedback and some comments. Please subscribe to Late Night Lessons. And I'll be back before you know it with more content and material. Thank you.